Hello YouTube, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Today we're going to look back on uh, the 7410 uh, server infrastructure MCSA. Uh, we're back on chapter one, part one. We're looking at Windows Server Core. Our next video is going to be 1.2. This is going to be the last video for this series. Um, I'm going to try to keep it quick. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, so what's new in Server Core? If you've been familiar with Server for a while, you've seen Server Core and Server 2008. But what makes Server Core uh, 2012 so special is how you can dynamically change it after the OS has been installed. And it's quite reliable from what I've seen. Um, so we have the full GUI in Windows Server 2012. Uh, as you can see, this is the GUI. If you don't know what GUI means, it just means Graphic User Interface. Um, and then we have um, the Server Core and the Minimal Server in Interface. So the server core interface and the middle server interface stand side by side here. And on the left, you can see the server core instance. And on the right, you can see the minimal server interface. With the server core instance, you basically just have a shell and something called sconfig, S-C-O-N-F-I-G. Um, and sconfig is basically a way that you can manage your server. Uh, we can take a look at that in a little bit. Um, so basically, um, with the minimal server interface, you kind of get the advantages of server core, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, but you still get some of the GUI tools. For instance, you get server manager. Um, you also get basically any of the GUI tools, but you have to run them from command line. Um, now, the advantages of these, if you're unsure, are pretty um, significant. So a server core installation versus a full GUI is quite a lot lighter on resources, um, and that's a big deal to a lot of people. I don't know if you guys have heard of Linux before or used Linux, but that's one of the big things that Linux guys say is that, oh, you, you guys run GUIs on your servers. Well, server core is great because you can, you can use um, Windows Server but have a lighter footprint. It's also not only going to um, take up less resources and drive space, it's also going to be a lot more secure because it's a smaller attack surface. So it also is going to give you the advantage of being a lot easier to patch. Um, because it's a server core installation, you guys can actually patch this a lot quicker. There's less patches for different things and um, less things break as a result. So doing server core is kind of nice. And one of the things that's big about server 2012 is that not only can you take advantage of server core like 2008, but you can start off a server with all the roles installed or with, with a full GUI, install it, and then turn it to a server core with a single command or by checking a couple checkboxes. So it's a very dynamic uh, version of Windows Server compared to before with server core. So, you know, I, I like to give the example of you could hand this off to a noob and get him to build you up the server with the GUI and then turn it down to a server core easily. Um, but there is some things that you got to think about when you decide to do that. And we'll get into that in a bit. So why use server core? As I said, server core is not a separate product or addition. Um, it's an installation, installation option included with Windows Server 2012 standard and data center editions. So why should you use it? Hardware resource and conservation. Server core eliminates some of the most memory and processor intensive elements of Windows Server 2012 operating system, thus devoting more of the system hardware to running essential services. Reducing disk space. Uh, server core requires less disk space for the installed operating system, um, as well as less swap space, which maximizes the utilization of the server storage resources. Um, so that's a big one. Uh, reduce patch frequency. The graphical elements of Windows Server 2012 are among the most frequently patched. So running server core reduces the number of patches that administrators must apply. Fewer patches also mean fewer server restarts and less downtime. Reduce attack service. The less surface software there is running on the computer, the fewer the entrances there are for attackers to exploit. Server core reduces the potential o uh, openings presented by the operating system, increasing its overall security. So what's new? Microsoft first introduced the server core installation option in Windows Server 2008, as I said. It was an intriguing idea, but few administrators took advantage of it. The main reason for it was that most server administrators were not uh, sufficiently uh, conversant with the command line interface to manage a Windows server without a GUI. It's kind of sad, but it's true. 
and it's still kind of that way. Full GUI to server core in one command. In Windows Server 2008 and Server 2008 or 2, the decision to install the operating system using the server core option was irrevocable. Once you installed the operating system using the server core, there was no way to get back to uh, the GUI uh, except to perform a complete reinstallation. That was all changed in Windows Server 12, just like I kind of was saying. Uh, but now you can do it with PowerShell commands pretty quickly. So. There's two ways you can do this. As I said, you can either do it with the with the server manager. You can go in there and use the add remove uh, roles interface to add the stuff. So if you wanted to add the server graphical shell, you could do that. Or if you wanted to add the graphical management tools, uh, you could do that to a server core installation. Um, but you'd have to do it from command line if it was already server core. But if you're in the GUI, you can uncheck those to turn it into a server core if you don't want to use the command line. So you've got two ways you can do it. So basically here, you can see that this is different roles that are supported um, and features that are supported in Windows Server 2012 in Server Core. So you can have most of the main things, Active Directory, DHCP, DNS, Hyper-V, Print Services, File Services, um, LDS, um, you know, ASP.NET, Web Server, uh, Windows Server Update Service, WSUS. Um, so you also get RS. But there's things to note, to note that you don't get um, such as, I'm pretty sure certificate services isn't here. So, yeah. So, it's important to know that if you decide to make a server server core, that you won't be able to use these certain roles. And it's very possible one day, I haven't seen someone do this, but because it's pretty dumb, but it is possible one day that you could actually accidentally install um, roles that are not supported and then turn it to a server core, breaking your installation or your environment. So, you got to make sure you understand this. Um, and these are the features that are um, available in Windows Server 2012 and Server, co uh, server uh, Core mode. So it's important to understand what these are. You guys will want to print this off um, and actually memorize this because this will be on the test. Welcome back. I thought I uh, wrapped that up a little prematurely. So I thought what we would do is we would uh, we'd take a look at what those commands were. Um, just real quick here. So server core options. If the server has a full um, a full installation of Windows Server, the following command removes the two features, the server graphical shell and graphical uh, management tools and infrastructure, and the resulting installation is server core. Get Windows feature GUI, uninstall Windows feature dash restart. Uh, if the server has a full installation of Windows Server and I need to bring the server down to a minimal ser uh, server interface, I only need to remove the server GUI shell. That's very important for the test. That I, I'm pretty sure that's going to be on your test. I can't say for sure. I took mine over a year ago. Um, but make sure you understand that which command does what and what you need to remove to make it a minimal server interface. Um, so server with a GUI. If the Windows server is installed with server with a GUI, the following two features are installed and can be verified here. You can say get Windows feature server GUI management infra, comma server GUI shell. If the server is in server core, uh, core mode, um, this command adds the two features and brings the server core up to the server with a GUI level. Get Windows features server GUI management infra, server GUI shell, install Windows feature dash restart. <clears throat> So that's it. That's all I wanted to really show you guys. So that concludes our lesson for today. That was uh, the end of 1.1. Uh, next is going to be 1.2. Today we went over how to uh, turn a, a server into a server core and basically explained all the different roles that are supported in server core and not supported. And we also showed you those commands. And next we're going to look at 1.2. So please stay tuned for our next lesson. Please like this video if you liked it. Please dislike it if you disliked it. And I'll catch you on the next video.